E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company, commonly referred to as DuPont, is an American chemical company that was founded in July 1802 as a gunpowder mill by a Luther I.R.E. acute any acute DuPont. In the 20th century, DuPont developed many polymers such as Vespol, Neoprene, Nylon, Corian, Teflon, Mylar, Kevlar, Zemdrain, M5 Fiber, Nomex, Tyvek, Sorona and Lycra. DuPont developed Freon for the refrigerant industry, and later more environmentally friendly refrigerants. It also developed synthetic pigments and paints including chromaflare. In 2014, DuPont was the world's fourth largest chemical company based on market capitalization and eighth based on revenue. Its stock price is a component of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. History Establishment 1802 DuPont was founded in 1802 by Eleuther I.R.E. Acutene Acute DuPont, using capital raised in France and gunpowder machinery imported from France. The company was started at the Eleutherian Mills, on the Brandywine Creek, near Wilmington, Delaware, two years after he and his family left France to escape the French Revolution. It began as a manufacturer of gunpowder, as DuPont noticed that the industry in North America was lagging behind Europe. The company grew quickly, and by the mid-19th century, had become the largest supplier of gunpowder to the United States military, supplying half the powder used by the Union Army during the American Civil War. The Eleutherian Mills site is now a museum and a national historic landmark. Expansion. 1902 to 1912 DuPont continued to expand, moving into the production of dynamite and smokeless powder. In 1902, DuPont's president, Eugene DuPont, died, and the surviving partners sold the company to three great grandsons of the original founder. Charles Lee Reese was appointed as director, and the company began centralizing their research departments. The company subsequently purchased several smaller chemical companies, and in 1912 these actions gave rise to government scrutiny under the Sherman Antitrust Act. The courts declared that the company's dominance of the explosives business constituted a monopoly and ordered divestment. The court ruling resulted in the creation of the Hercules Powder Company and the Atlas Powder Company and now part of Axo Nobel. At the time of divestment, DuPont retained the single base nitrocellulose powders, while Hercules held the double base powders combining nitrocellulose and nitroglycerine. DuPont subsequently developed the improved military rifle line of smokeless powders. In 1910, DuPont published a brochure entitled Farming with Dynamite. The pamphlet was instructional, outlining the benefits to using their dynamite products on stumps and various other obstacles that would be easier to remove with dynamite as opposed to other more conventional, inefficient means. DuPont also established two of the first industrial laboratories in the United States where they began the work on cellulose chemistry, lacquers and other non-explosive products. DuPont Central Research was established at the DuPont Experimental Station across the Brandywine Creek from the original powder mills. Automotive Investments 1914 In 1914, Pierre South DuPont invested in the fledgling automobile industry, buying stock in General Motors. The following year he was invited to sit on GM's board of directors and would eventually be appointed the company's chairman. The DuPont company would assist the struggling automobile company further with a $25 million purchase of GM stock. In 1920, P.R.S. DuPont was elected president of General Motors. Under DuPont's guidance, GM became the number one automobile company in the world. However, in 1957, because of DuPont's influence within GM, further action under the Clayton Antitrust Act forced DuPont to divest its shares of General Motors. Major breakthroughs 1920s 1930s In the 1920s, DuPont continued its emphasis on material science, hiring Wallace Carothers to work on polymers in 1928. 
Carothers invented neoprene, a synthetic rubber, the first polyester superpolymer, and, in 1935, nylon. The invention of Teflon followed a few years later. DuPont introduced phenothiazine as an insecticide in 1935. Second World War, 1941-1945 DuPont ranked 15th among United States corporations in the value of wartime production contracts. As the inventor and manufacturer of nylon, DuPont helped produce the raw materials for parachutes, powder bags, and tires. DuPont also played a major role in the Manhattan Project in 1943, designing, building and operating the Hanford Plutonium Producing Plant in Hanford, Washington. In 1950 DuPont also agreed to build the Savannah River Plant in South Carolina as part of the effort to create a hydrogen bomb. Space Age Developments 1950-1970 After the war, DuPont continued its emphasis on new materials, developing Mylar, Dacron, Orlon, and Lycra in the 1950s, and Tyvek, Nomex, Kiana, Colfam, and Corian in the 1960s. DuPont materials were critical to the success of the Apollo project of the United States space program. DuPont has been the key company behind the development of modern body armor. In the Second World War DuPont's ballistic nylon was used by Britain's Royal Air Force to make flak jackets. With the development of Kevlar in the 1960s, DuPont began tests to see if it could resist a lead bullet. This research would ultimately lead to the bullet-resistant vests that are the mainstay of police and military units in the industrialized world. Conoco Holdings 1981-1995 In 1981, DuPont acquired Conoco Inc., a major American oil and gas producing company that gave it a secure source of petroleum feedstocks needed for the manufacturing of many of its fiber and plastics products. The acquisition, which made DuPont one of the top 10 U.S.-based petroleum and natural gas producers and refiners, came about after a bidding war with the giant distillery Seagram Company Limited, which would become DuPont's largest single shareholder with four seats on the board of directors. On April 6, 1995, after being approached by Seagram Chief Executive Officer Edgar Bronfman, Jr., DuPont announced a deal in which the company would buy back all the shares owned by Seagram. In 1999, DuPont sold all of its shares of Conoco, which merged with Philips Petroleum Company. Activities, 2000 Present DuPont describes itself as a global science company that employs more than 60,000 people worldwide and has a diverse array of products offerings. The company ranks 86th in the Fortune 500 on the strength of nearly $36 billion in revenues, $4.848 billion in profits in 2013. In April 2014, Forbes ranked DuPont 171st on its Global 2000, the listing of the world's top public companies. DuPont businesses are organized into the following five categories, known as marketing platforms. Electronic and Communication Technologies, Performance Materials, Coatings and Color Technologies, Safety and Protection, and Agriculture and Nutrition. The Agriculture Division, DuPont Pioneer makes and sells hybrid seed and genetically modified seed, some of which goes on to become genetically modified food. Genes engineered into their products include Liberty Link which provides resistance to Bayer's Ignite herbicide, Liberty herbicides, the Herculeci insect protection gene which provides protection against various insects, the Herculeca W insect protection trait which provides protection against other insects, the yield guard corn borer gene, which provides resistance to another set of insects, and the Roundup Ready Corn 2 trait that provides crop resistance against glyphosate herbicides. In 2010, DuPont Pioneer received approval to start marketing plenish soybeans which contains the highest oleic acid content of any commercial soybean product, at more than 75%.
Replenish provides a product with no trans fat, 20%, less saturated fat than regular soybean oil, and more stable oil with greater flexibility in food and industrial applications. Plenish is genetically engineered to block the formation of enzymes that continue the cascade downstream from oleic acid resulting in an accumulation of the desirable monounsaturated acid. In 2004, the company sold its textiles business, which included some of its best-known brands such as Lycra, Dacron Polyester, Orlon Acrylic, Antron Nylon and Thermalite, to Kosh Industries. In 2011, DuPont was the largest producer of titanium dioxide in the world, primarily provided as a white pigment used in the paper industry. DuPont has 150 research and development facilities located in China, Brazil, India, Germany, and Switzerland with an average investment of $2 billion annually in a diverse range of technologies for many markets including agriculture, genetic traits, biofuels, automotive, construction, electronics, chemicals, and industrial materials. DuPont employs more than 10,000 scientists and engineers around the world. On January 9, 2011, DuPont announced that it had reached an agreement to buy Danish company Danisco for $6.3 billion. On May 16, 2011, DuPont announced that its tender offer for Danisco had been successful and that it would proceed to redeem the remaining shares and delist the company. On May 1, 2012, DuPont announced that it had acquired from Bunge full ownership of the Soli Joint Venture, a soy-based ingredients company. DuPont previously owned 72% of the joint venture while Bunge owned the remaining 28%. In February 2013, DuPont Performance Coatings was sold to the Carlyle Group and rebranded as Exalter Coating Systems. Chemors in October 2013, DuPont announced that it was planning to spin off its performance chemicals business into a new publicly traded company in mid-2015. The company filed its initial Form 10 with the 2nd December 2014 and announced that the new company would be called the Chemors Company. The spin-off to DuPont shareholders was completed on July 1, 2015 and Chemours stock began trading on the New York Stock Exchange on the same date. DuPont will focus on production of GMO seeds, materials for solar panels, and alternatives to fossil fuels. Chemours becomes responsible for the cleanup of 171 former DuPont sites, which DuPont says will cost between $295 million to $945 million. Merger with Dow On December 11, 2015, DuPont announced that it would merge with the Dow Chemical Company in an all-stock deal. The combined company, which will be known as Dow DuPont, will have an estimated value of $130 billion, be equally held by the shareholders of both companies, and maintain their headquarters in Delaware and Michigan respectively. Within two years of the merger's closure, expected in late 2016 and subject to regulatory approval, Dow DuPont will be split into three separate public companies, focusing on the agriculture, chemical, and specialty product industries respectively. Commentators have noted that the deal is likely to face antitrust scrutiny in several countries, locations. The company's corporate headquarters are located in Wilmington, Delaware. The company's manufacturing, processing, marketing, and research and development facilities, as well as regional purchasing offices and distribution centers are located throughout the world. Major manufacturing sites include the Spruance plant near Richmond, Virginia, the Washington Works site in Washington, West Virginia, the Mobile Manufacturing Center in Axis, Alabama, the Bayport plant near Houston, Texas, the Mechelen site in Belgium, and the Changshu site in China. Other locations include the Yex plant on the Niagara River at Tonawanda, New York, the Sabine River Works plant in Orange, Texas, Texas, and the Parlin site in Sayreville, New Jersey. Corporate Governance Office of the Chief Executive Edward D. Breen, Chair of the Board and Chief Executive Officer, James C. Borrell, Executive Vice President, 
Benito Cachanero Sanchez, Senior Vice President, Human Resources. James C. Collins, Jr., Executive Vice President. Nicholas C. Fanandakish, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Douglas W. Muica, Senior Vice President and Chief Science and Technology Officer. Stacy Fox, Senior Vice President and General Counsel. Current Board of Directors Lamberto Andriotti. Edward D. Breen. Robert A. Brown. Bertrand P. Columb, Alexander M. Cutler, L. Uther I. Dupont, James L. Gallagly, Marilyn Hewson, Lois D. Julie Bear, Ulf M. Mark Schneider, Lee M. Thomas, Patrick J. Ward. On October 5, 2015, Dupont announced that Ellen Coleman would retire as chair and CEO on October 16, 2015. Green was appointed CEO in November 2015 replacing Coleman, environmental record. In the 1990s, DuPont was a founding member of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development with then DuPont CEO Chad Holliday as chairman of the WBCSD. From 2000 to 2001, the organization has developed guidelines for measuring sustainability cited by the Natural Resources Defense Council and the Environmental Defense Fund, and its Vision 2050 blueprint for slowing and reversing environmental damage has been highlighted by The Guardian. In 2005, Business Week magazine, in conjunction with the Climate Group, ranked DuPont as the best practice leader in cutting their carbon gas emissions. DuPont reduced its greenhouse gas emissions by more than 65 percent from the 1990 levels while using 7 percent less energy and producing 30 percent more product. In May 2007 the $2.1 million DuPont Nature Center at Mispillion Harbor Reserve, a wildlife observatory and interpretive center on the Delaware Bay near Milford, Delaware was open to enhance the beauty and integrity of the Delaware estuary. The facility will be state-owned and operated by the Delaware Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Control. In 2010, researchers at the Political Economy Research Institute of the University of Massachusetts Amherst ranked DuPont as the fourth-largest corporate source of air pollution in the United States. DuPont released a statement that 2012 total releases and transfers were 13% lower than 2011 levels and 70% lower than 1987 levels. Data from the EPA's Toxic Release Inventory Database included in the Political Economy Research Institute studies likewise show a reduction in DuPont's emissions from 12.4 million pounds of air releases and 22.4 million pounds of toxic incinerated transfers in 2006 to 10.94 million pounds and 22.0 million pounds respectively in 2010. Over the same period, the Political Economy Research Institute's toxic score for DuPont increased from 122,426 to 7 million. 86,303. One of DuPont's facilities was listed no. 4 on the Mother Jones Top 20 Polluters of 2010, legally discharging over 5 million pounds of toxic chemicals into New Jersey, Delaware waterways. In 2012, DuPont was named to the Carbon Disclosure Project Global 500 Leadership Index. Inclusion is based on company performance on sustainability metrics, emissions reduction goals, and environmental performance transparency. In 2014 DuPont was the top scoring company in the chemical sector according to CDP, with a score of A or B in every evaluation area except for supply chain management. Between 2007 and 2014 there were 34 accidents resulting in toxic releases at DuPont plants across the U.S., with no fewer than eight fatalities. Four employees died of suffocation in a Houston, Texas accident involving leakage of nearly 24,000 pounds of methyl mercapan. As a result, 
The company became the largest of the 450 businesses placed into the Occupational Safety and Health Administration's Severe Violator Program in July 2015. The program was established for companies OSHA says have repeatedly failed to address safety infractions. Recognition DuPont has been awarded the National Medal of Technology four times. First in 1990, for its invention of high-performance man-made polymers such as nylon, neoprene rubber, Teflon, fluorocarbon resin, and a wide spectrum of new fibers, films, and engineering plastics. The second in 2002, for policy and technology leadership in the phase-out and replacement of chlorofluorocarbons. DuPont scientist George Levitt was honored with the medal in 1993 for the development of sulfonylurea herbicides. In 1996, DuPont scientist Stephanie Kwalek was recognized for the discovery and development of Kevlar.